where the you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I've got a fun title, um, but a tutorial using the Revit API and Python to do what I call nuking a Revit model. Um, so what am I talking about? Nuking is a pretty crazy word. Um, it's my pet name for essentially bulk deleting elements out of Revit models, uh, similar to such add-ins as eTransmit if you've used them before. Uh, we'll be using Dynamo, but you could build this in PyRevit as well. Um, so this isn't a purge, this is actually deleting elements that might be in use. It's a very common task when you're sending work in progress or for issue models um, to clients or to consultants, when you may not want to include everything in the model that's usually a work in progress based element. For example, maybe you might want to strip out sheets so that people can't reauthor your work, or you're just trying to send the model in the leanest possible format uh, without elements people don't need. So uh, today I'll be using Autodesk Revit 2024 and the current supported Dynamo build and I'll also be using the DS Iron Python 2.7 package to support the Python engine uh, that we'll be using today. So if I jump into Revit, um, which model shall we nuke? Well, what better model to nuke uh, than the Snowden Towers model, the new sample project? So there are a lot of things that we typically would be targeting for removal uh, when sending models in this way. And we may not want to remove everything. We might have partial deletions that we want to undertake, um, but let's have a look at some common candidates that we would target. Uh, once this model boots up. So uh, the most common one that we usually would get rid of is often views or sheets. So we're gonna be looking at the view class in the API today and finding all the relevant view types that we want to remove. Um, as well as this, we'll be looking at sheets, uh, which if anyone's used the API before, you'll know actually technically fall under the view class as well. Alternatively, you can target them as view sheets. Uh, that's an alternative way to collect them, uh, but we'll probably just be collecting them up in the views as we go. Speaking of views, another type of view that falls under the view class is view templates. Uh, so we'll also be giving the option to delete the view templates in the model. Um, and from there, the next targets we would look at are legends and schedules, which again, you can collect as a basis of the view class. Um, beyond that, we'll be targeting some non-view class based elements. So for example, one of them will be view filters, which we usually strip out if we're getting rid of views and sheets just to make the model as light as possible. And as well as this, we're also going to be looking at uh, Revit and CAD links. Um, so we can see on the manage links, this model does have a series of Revit link types. Um, it doesn't have any CAD, but I'll show you how to collect them and delete them anyway. There's other things you could target as well. For example, things like images, which might sometimes be something you wish to remove out of your model as well. So I'm just gonna begin with what I call a starter script, which has a few things set up that are very easy to set up uh, that you, know, you wouldn't wanna to have to do too many times. So I'm just gonna open up my nuke starter. And in this case, we can see I've got a bunch of Boolean nodes, um, so true or false. I'm gonna set them all to false by default, just to be safe. We don't want to tend to delete anything by default. I'm gonna to switch to automatic mode. Um, and these can be the controls the user interacts with to choose what to delete. So we're gonna to have to collect these elements based on these scenarios using the Revit API. So what I've done here is just wrap them up into one list of options. And I'm now gonna create a Python node and we're gonna do this all within Python using the Revit API. So I'm just gonna plug this in. Um, now this will use a boiler boilerplate or a starter template, which you can find over on my GitHub. Um, so there's me just collecting a meme for this today. Uh, so if I go to Aussie BIM Guru on GitHub and I go back to my base and then I go to my repositories, uh, you'll find under the miscellaneous repo um, a Python template, which you can also use to start off your script today. We're not gonna be using a lot of this. We're only gonna be using small parts of the, the boilerplate, um, which I'll just customize now before we get started. So in this Python node using the Iron Python 2 engine, um, I'm going to get rid of pretty much everything all the way down to Revit services, which we're then gonna need the document manager and the transaction manager from to get the current document and also to undertake a transaction. I'm gonna get rid of the API UI because we're not really doing anything with the UI. So we'll just keep DB. And we're currently just gonna import star. We're gonna import everything. We also need the current document. Um, and in this case, we don't need any of these functions from my boilerplate. And we're gonna collect the elements in a, a little bit of a different way. We don't need this block of text here, um, but we will eventually be doing something in a transaction. So we're gonna keep the transaction ensure and transaction done methods on the transaction instance, or the, the current instance. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. 
Um, and we're going to begin by firstly collecting our options. Um, now I'm just going to copy and paste a little bit of code in because this is quite a repetitive thing to write out. But effectively what I'm going to do is something like this. So I'm creating variables. Um, in this case, I'm actually creating seven variables to line up to, sorry, uh, eight variables actually, to line up to eight objects. So in Python, if you take eight objects on one side of, of an argument and, or, and declare them as variables aside eight objects, each of those objects in order will be assigned to those variables. So what I, what I can do here is rather than writing out uh, option view equals in zero square zero to get the first object in the input, I can actually just say these eight objects equal the input. And it's gonna basically line up each of those variables to each object from this list. Um, I'm also using a special syntax here, which is uh, the backslash, which allows me in this case uh, to actually just put things onto new lines, just to make it a little bit easier to read what's going on. So this effectively just says, keep going on the next line as if there was no line there. Um, so this just enables me to work across a few different lines to keep things simple. So if I ran this, at the moment I don't actually have anything to pass out the end. Um, let's in this case maybe just pass these through. Um, and you can see I'm also able to take pretty much anything, chuck it to a new line with a backslash and the, the Python interpreter will basically read it up until that point as if there was no line there. So that just saves a little bit of space. So to each of these options, I'm creating a variable option views, legends, schedules, sheets, templates, filters, Revit, and CAD. And these are all gonna be arguments, true or false, to let me know whether I wanna collect these objects. The next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is actually look at the view type class. So if I jump over to Revit API docs, um, today we're gonna to be looking at the view class primarily. Um, so of the view class, we're gonna to need to check the view types of, the, of all these views that we collect in our document. So we're gonna be using in this case, the view type property, which will point us towards a enum or an enumeration, which we can use to validate the types of views these things are. So I'm gonna take a list of these view types and check if the type of a view I collect is falls within a bunch of these view types. So we know some of these things are views and some of these things aren't really views. For example, a schedule, in this case, we're not gonna call this a view. Likewise, drawing sheet, now there is project browser and system browser as well. We don't wanna collect those, we don't wanna delete them, even if we couldn't in any way. Um, but you can see things like drafting views, sections, area plans, things that are actually views. Um, so we're gonna basically build a list of these view types so that we can compare the view types of views later in our script. So what I'm gonna do is just copy in a bit of code here. Again, it's quite a repetitive block of code. So what I'm doing is creating a list and calling it view types. I'll always usually collect these things that I like to call global constants in my functions, which I can call on. Um, in this case, view types is just gonna be a list in square brackets. Again, I'm using that backslash syntax just to keep my code a little bit narrower, but it's just a list of all the things that to me are a view type that constitutes what I call a view in Revit. So we can see floor plans, ceiling plans, elevations, 3Ds, drafting views, engineering plans, which are structural plans, area plans, sections, detail views, and renderings. So we're gonna basically use this as we work our way through our views to say, okay, are you, in this case, actually a, a view of a type we care about? I'm also gonna declare three extra constants, um, just after doc, in this case. And these are gonna just be called view type underscore sheet, view type underscore shared, and view type underscore legend. Um, and I might, uh, in this case, call this view type underscore views so that we have multiple views and maybe just tab and set these again just line those up to the enter there we go um, and these are going to be called upon later in uh, some loops as we work through the views to see if the view is a sheet a schedule or a legend um, i'm just declaring these earlier to a variable so that i don't have to keep asking for them as an enumerated outcome. I think it's just a slightly more efficient uh, way to write code when you're dealing with these types of things. Um, I could be wrong, but it's just how I like to work. I find it easier to refer back to these as constants earlier in the code. That way, if I ever need to modify them at a global level, I only have to do it in one place. Um, so now that we have these things, we can actually start working towards collecting all the elements we want. So we know back here which things we do wanna collect. For now, let's just say we do wanna collect views. That's true. So we can see that's making its way through the code. Um, and now that we've done that, we also probably just wanna save first, but I'm just gonna now say that I wanna collect uh, view elements. 
And some of these will be true, some will be false. So we have to collect the views regardless. Um, now I'm also gonna create a function here just to collect elements by class. We're gonna be collecting elements by class quite a few times in our code, which can take quite a while to write out. So I'm just gonna build a function for it instead. So I'll just do it right after the document argument and I'm just gonna make a function to collect by class. And I'm just gonna call this, uh, uh, I'll just say def to make it a function first, uh, but let's just call this collect by class. Now we have to specify a class as an argument. I can't use the word class because it's reserved in Python. Uh, so I'll just call this rbt underscore underscore class. And this will be a class that we pass to this function into a filtered element collector. And I'm also gonna say my doc as an argument equals doc. The reason why I like to do that is so that if you do wanna work this across a linked model or something different, when you change your code down the line, um, it's very easy to work this way, but by default, if I don't specify a document to this function, it's just gonna go and use the current document uh, that I've specified before as a variable. It's just a little bit neater. So all we need to do now is just say that elements is equal to, and we're gonna use a filtered element collector. And we're gonna, in this case, pass in my document. And we're gonna use the of class argument. And in this case, we're now gonna pass in the Revit class that we give to the function. And then finally, two elements. And then we'll just return those elements out of the function. So we're gonna use this function now when we're getting our views. So I'm gonna say uh, views, or I'll just call this views all is equal to that function. And into this, I'm gonna pass the view class. We can quickly check what we get from this function. And we can see we should get a majority of the views in the model. We can see we're getting things like schedules. We're also technically getting revision schedules, which isn't great, uh, but we're also getting a few nulls. So there's gonna be some nulls in there and they will represent a couple of things. Two of these things will be the project browser and the system browser, which we don't wanna pass forward. And a few of these will be 3D view templates, which Dynamo can't pass through the canvas. So we're doing this all within a block of Python where it can safely be transacted upon before it comes out of Dynamo. Um, so we've got our views. Now let's just say 4v in views all. So we're working across each of them. And I'm also just gonna create an object before called elements to delete. And this is just currently an empty list. Now I'm firstly gonna be checking basically step by step what types of elements we're dealing with. The first one I'm gonna work with is if it's a view template, and then we'll have a look at the view types after that. So if I go back to the view class, I can check if an element is a view template using the isTemplate property. So I can say firstly, if v is template, and if it is, the next thing we wanna check is are we actually collecting templates? So I can then say if, and I'm gonna go collect the option for templates, so if we are actually collecting templates to delete them, then we're gonna to want to append this view to elements to delete. From here, we're mostly gonna be dealing with view types. So assuming this wasn't a view template, I'm now going to collect uh, the view type using the view type property, just so we have this in a single property or variable. And I might just start commenting this as well, if view template. And then the next one will be get view type. So the first thing we wanna check is, is this element a view? And we can use these view types that we've collected before to verify this. So I can firstly say if view, and I'll say if view type is in these view types, then we know it's a view. And in this case, we can then, and we actually wanna say elif here, sorry, else if. So we stop at the point of collecting view templates. Um, now what I might actually do is just put this at the top because I do need my if statements to work together. So we can't interrupt them with a property. But now we can say, if it's a view template, do this. Otherwise, if view type is in view type underscore views, then we wanna append this as well. Again, we need to firstly make sure if we're actually collecting views in the first place. And if we are, again, we just append the element. So let's just quickly test this by sending elements to delete out of the end of our script. Now I've got an error somewhere, name E, I'm passing, ah, these need to be V instead of E. There we go, and I can see that when I turn views off, 
we get nothing. Uh, let's turn templates on and there's our view templates with a couple of nulls for 3D view templates. And if I turn both on, we should get both the views and the view templates through this collector. Now we have a few more things that we can get out of the view class. Um, so these are gonna be schedules, sheets, and legends. So I can now say if sheet, because we know that's probably the third most common thing we're gonna encounter. So I'll say elif uh, view type equals, and again, we can use our global constant up here, view type sheet, and if option sheets. So if we are actually collecting sheets, then we'll append it again. So again, I can test this by turning on sheets and we can see now our sheets are getting passed through. So the last two, as you can guess, they're gonna be very basic. I'm just gonna copy this block of text. So I'm gonna say if view type is equal to view type shared or view type legend. And then option legends or option schedules. then we can collect those elements. So it's a very straightforward function. It runs fairly quickly as well. There's legends, there's schedules. Now with schedules, there's an exception here. Some of these are going to be revision schedules. It actually collects these as schedule types. So we're gonna also want to add an extra check on schedules. So if options schedules, and we're gonna use the and statement to add some more logic. So we also wanna make sure that view, uh, we'll check firstly that revision with a triangle on it is not in uh, v.name, just to make sure this isn't a revision schedule. And now we can see that that's excluded revision schedules from what we collect in this case. So now let's just go again and probably just turn a few of these on so we can actually work across them in our function. There we go. I'll turn them off for now just because we also want to collect a few more things. So we now want to look for view filters Revit links and CAD links, and we're gonna collect these by class. So we're now gonna be looking at the additional or extra class collection. So first of all, we're gonna check if option filters, so are we actually collecting filters? And if we are, then we're gonna to wanna to extend our, our elements to delete list. So extend will basically just add all the elements within a list onto an existing list. So what do we wanna extend into the list? Well, in this case, we're gonna collect by class, and in, which is our function we built before. And we're gonna firstly just look for filter elements. This is the class for view filters in the model. Um, likewise, uh, we're going to be looking for option Revit to get our Revit links. Notice in this case, I'm not using the else if statement because we wanna do these three steps separately. But I'm just putting them one after the other so it's really easy to visually follow what's going on. And in this case, we're gonna look for the Revit link type class. And finally, we're looking for CAD. And in this case, the class we're looking for here is import instance. Now, if you're ever not sure what class an object is that you're looking for, try to get one in Revit, select it in Dynamo, and have a look at it in the Revit API, and you'll usually be able to find out what its class is called um, in that case. So that's pretty much how I found out what these classes actually were. I got the Dynamo element, and then I inspected its class in Python. Um, so by this point, we should be extending in extra things. So if I turn on view filters, um, in this case, uh, there's probably a bug here actually, um, in that we can't seem to extend anything in here unless there's already something else in there as well. I'll just double check. It seems like the view filters aren't currently being, being picked up. So option filters is true. Ah. Oh. Uh, we have to actually extend <laughs> this in the first place. We weren't currently extending these. Collect by class. I probably called that incorrectly. Ah, that should be a lowercase. That's uppercase. I'll just make it uppercase there. And I think now that should, there we go. That should work. So I had to actually use the extend, extend method there. We can see we can get view filters, Revit links, CAD links if they are in the model, but currently they're not. So now we have the ability to basically build this giant list of things to delete. Um, so the last step of the process is actually to collect and track what we couldn't delete. Um, but at this point, we wanna send all these elements basically through a deletion process. So I'm gonna switch over to manual. Um, in this case, the delete method uh, is actually a method of the document class. 
So we're gonna be calling on the document and we're gonna be using the delete method for the ID of the element that we want to delete. Now we can send the, in the collection of element IDs or just one. I'm gonna send them through one at a time because we're gonna to try to delete the elements because we might not be able to. For example, if we're on a sheet or a view and it's the only thing we have open, it's not gonna be able to delete it because otherwise we'd have no view or sheet to, to, to be left with. Uh, so at this point, um, we now have to actually delete the elements. Now I did have a different process of doing this, which is why there was a bit of a cut in the video, but I found there's a safer way to run this step in Dynamo. Um, originally what I tried to do was use a function to try and safely delete the element, uh, but Dynamo does run into problems when it tries to reference elements that don't exist anymore, um, even though they're in try accept statements. So what I'm gonna do now is use a different method. Um, I'm going to be dealing, first of all, with an empty list for elements that have failed to delete. I wanna know what doesn't actually make it through the loop. Um, I'm also going to get, instead of elements to delete, I'm gonna get IDs to delete. So that we have element IDs that we target instead of elements. And this should get around the issue of not being able to find an element once it's deleted in the DB in Revit. So I'm gonna say this is e.id for e in elements. To delete. So this should turn all the elements into element IDs instead. Um, so now we're going to be running in a transaction so we can modify the document. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to say for E, oh, so actually for ID in IDs to delete. We're going to try and delete the element. So sometimes this won't work. Sometimes elements just can't be deleted. Maybe it's the last view in the model. Maybe it's something that we just aren't able to get rid of. So we want to catch this scenario first using a try accept statement. So for the current document, we're going to use the delete method and I'll be able to just try passing in the ID. And if it does work, it will just delete the element. Great, move on, um, next element. If it doesn't work, we're then going to want to try to get the element that we tried to delete and just make sure we can actually get it. And then if we can, we're gonna add it to the failed elements list to report. So I'm firstly gonna say try in this case to get the elements. So we're gonna say element is equal to doc get elements. We're gonna try and retrieve the element by its ID. So if for some reason the element did actually get deleted properly, but it's still registered an error in the try statement, we're now gonna to try to get the element and see if its element ID is still valid. Um, if it's not, it should just return none or no element. So I'm gonna say if element, which implies this has to be something that's not none. In that case, we should now be able to append the element to elements failed. Otherwise, except we're just gonna pass. Something didn't work, we can't get the element, it doesn't exist anymore, so we're gonna pass. And this will get around some scenarios where maybe you've deleted an element that has a dependency on something that's already been deleted, so it itself just got deleted in the process. It's a fairly robust deletion checking process. And then finally, we just wanna send out elements failed. Now, before I hit run and actually make this happen, we're just gonna send this into a watch node as an output. And we're just gonna call this uh, elements failed to delete. And I'll just hit save, close, save. And with everything set to true, I'm just gonna hit run. And we should hopefully see no errors and we should see a report of probably just the sheet that we're on. Yep, so we can see we couldn't delete the cover sheet. That's because we're on that view. Um, that makes perfect sense. You have to have at least one view open in a model, but we should find that otherwise we successfully deleted pretty much everything. We didn't collect walkthroughs as a view type. So that's one thing that you could add to the, the view types that you're targeting. Uh, but otherwise we've got the cover sheet, the schedules and the legends are gone. Uh, we're probably gonna find the view templates and view filters are gone as well. So no view filters, no view templates, fantastic. Uh, no links should be there, no Revit, no CAD, excellent. Um, we'll just run it through Dynamo Player now. Um, so I'll just boot up that project again with everything still in it, of course. And we'll have a look at it um, through Dynamo Player. Before we do, I'll just quickly show some graph properties that I've modified in the graph to make it more presentable to the user. So if I go to back into Dynamo, reopen that particular graph, the script or whatever you call it, who cares, call it what you like, <laughs> just be consistent, which I'm not. <laughs> okay, so under extensions, graph properties, I've also just added a description, a warning, use carefully, 
who authored it, and also just I've added the custom property called dependencies just to tell the user it's going to be using the Iron Python 2.7 package. Um, other than that, the last thing to do is to set everything to false by default. And this will get around the scenario where someone might hit run without going to the inputs, which could be really dangerous if they don't know what they're doing. So I'll just save this boot up Dynamo player. And this script is just sitting on my desktop at the moment, but you could put this in your company library, of course. Um, so once this boots up, I've already added uh, desktop as a folder. So I just go to desktop, nuke demo, um, hit this to open it. And in this case, uh, we can see all the inputs that are currently false. So let's just hit this, nothing happens. Let's go for maybe views. And we can see we're able to delete all the views in the model very quickly, so this shouldn't take long. Cool, views will always take the longest. It's the most things to delete typically. Um, then we can just go for the rest, just nuke everything, run. Um, and this should view, nuke everything except for the sheet that I'm on currently, which failed to delete, but we can see otherwise we've, we've got a really nice little uh, model cleaning utility now. Um, of course, you know, you can always purge as well. That's usually a good step to do after. Uh, there is some API in Revit 2024 for running a purge unused, so you could integrate that into your script as well in 2024. Um, but otherwise, we can see we've just successfully really stripped this model back. It's, a, it's still obviously a 3D model. There will still be, you know, 3D geometry, uh, BIM, levels, all those things are still there. Um, we've just stripped back a lot of the things that hold most of the file weight in these particular models. So we can see we've still got a really nice little building there. Um, quite a good sample model, I must say. I do quite like it. Uh, but otherwise a very compact and useful little tool. Um, so I hope you find that quite useful and might find some use for it in your day-to-day -day work. Um, so you can find this script and other tools over on my GitHub, um, such as the script and the Dynamo repo or my Python template in the miscellaneous repo. Um, it's all free for use, so go for gold. Um, so if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Drop a like if you enjoyed this and share it with other people that it might benefit. If you have any video requests, leave them in the comments um, or just any comments about the video. I will reply to every single one. And I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.